Today, I will be explaining how to use depth of field in your game, along with making it dynamic so it turns on only when you're looking at another object. First, I'm going to explain how each of the properties work. So if you're wondering how to make this dynamic, where it's off by default and only becomes blurry when you are in front of an object, go to the timestamp on screen. To add and adjust depth of field, make sure the Explorer and Properties tab are enabled. To do this, click on the View tab at the top left and then you can enable these over here. Afterwards, hover over the Lighting service and click on the plus button. And now you can type in depth of field and then click it to add it into the lighting. Now you should notice that the screen is already blurry. If it is not blurry, you need to increase your graphic settings in game first. Depth of field only started working for me once it was set to eight bars or higher. So keep that in mind when you're making your game. From here, we can adjust its settings by clicking on it and going to the properties section. Just to demonstrate this a little bit better, I'm going to play test this while I adjust these settings and explain what they do. So I'm gonna click on lighting again. I'm gonna select depth of field and I'm going to start with the focus distance. Focus distance is the distance in studs from the camera where it will not be blurry. So if I press this button over here to change it to 25, you'll notice that this sign, which is 25 studs in front of me, is visible and it's not blurry. And while you can read the 50 studs over here, I'll explain why it does that in a second. And also text is just kind of weird with this effect. If we go back here, far intensity, changes how blurry your screen is past the focus distance. So if we look in the background over here at where the castle is, and we lower this far intensity down to zero, you'll notice that it's completely visible and there's no blur. But if I turn it back up, then it starts to get blurry. And right now there's a kind of a weird transition with it. You'll notice that at a certain point, it just kind of right here near point 22, it just kind of jumps, so I don't know if that's something that they're going to fix or not. And from here, we could go to the near intensity, and it's basically the same thing, except that it is the blur before the focus point. So if I lower this, then my character will start to become visible again. And take note that this focus distance is from the camera. So just because this is 25 studs away from my character, it's not 25 studs away from my camera. So if I were to zoom out, then you'd notice it'd start to become blurry again. And finally, the in focus radius is the distance from the focus distance point where there won't be any blur. To explain this, here's a quick explanation. Let's say I'm standing at the start where I was and the focus distance is at 100 studs. If I change the in focus radius to 50, that means it will not be blurry 50 studs in each direction from the center point. The text on the signs I put don't provide the best representative of this because the text is visible before the blur effect is gone for the actual part. Now I'll show you how to make this effect dynamic. This dynamic effect was an open sourced project made prior to the direct implementation of the depth of field effect into Roblox Studio by a developer forum member named the Incognito Dev. I will link the thread where he further explained its functionality in the description if you are interested. In order to achieve this effect in your game, go into the description and grab the dynamic depth of field model from the important link section so you can follow along. Simply adding it into your game will not enable it, as you need to make some adjustments first. Once you have gotten the model, go over to the toolbox, which you can enable under the view tab, click the second button from the left, and make sure it is set to my models, and then you can click it and it will insert it into your game. From here, you can drag it into the starter character scripts, which you can find under the starter player, drag it in here. And afterwards, make sure you insert the depth of field effect into the lighting. And I already have one that I have preset here. And I would suggest keeping it disabled 
and have the fire intensity set to zero just because of how the script is set up. You can enable this or do whatever you want with it, but you will have to change things inside of the script. For those of you who just want to see how the settings are by default, you can play test your game and walk up to something and test it. It's set to a five stud distance. So if I walk up over here and I stand here, you'll notice that the blur effect happens in the background, but when I look away from it, it goes away. Now, if you don't see this blur effect, you will need to increase your graphics quality settings in game. So as you can see, I have it set to eight. And if I put it down to seven and I try it again, you notice that the blur effect doesn't happen no matter how close I get to it. So then if I go in, put it back up, let's just put it to 10 and you'll notice that the effect has already started. If you would like to change the settings to your own liking, make sure you stop the playtest and you go back into the depth of field script inside of the starter character scripts. If you want to change how quickly it becomes blurry or the amount of blurriness, go on over to line 12. This basically means it will start at zero and it will end up at one and it will do so in increments of 0.1. So you can change this one to your liking if you want it to be quicker or slower. And this is the same when it comes to the function right below it, which will decrease it all the way back down to zero when you're not looking at something. If you scroll down to line 30, this is an important one. If you want to change the distance of when the blur effect will turn on. So if I change this to 25 and I go back and play test this, you'll notice when I walk up over here to the sign, since this is 25 studs away, the blur effect will start right here. So 25 studs away and you'll notice that the blur effect starts. And then if I step back even just a little bit, it turns off. So then if I were to go back inside of this and I can change one more thing if I really wanted to, which is these final two parts. So if you keep your far intensity by default at zero, and then you have the maximum at one, what you want it to end at, then you don't need to change these. But if you're keeping the depth of field, let's say at a default far intensity of 0.1, so it starts there, then you would want to change this. And then if you do not have a maximum of one for the use in your project, you should change this as well, because what this is going to check for, it's going to check for if you're looking at something within this distance that we set up here, and it's going to check if the far intensity is equal to zero. If both of these are true, then it will run the increase function, which is meant to turn on the depth of field and increase the far intensity. And then that's the same with this one. It's going to check if it's one and then it will decrease it. Anyways, if you guys have any additional questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.